In our last video, we ran short on time, so we never got to look at the second fire that I wanted to show you. The second fire we want to look at uh, took place on this corner here, the southeast corner of Grand River and Michigan Street. And this is what it looks like on Google today, but uh, back when it was the Art Van showroom, it, it looked nicer. It had this canopy around it. But this building isn't the one that caught on fire. This was a building that replaced the building that caught on fire. And that building was the Kwood Auto Company. On December 15th, 1955, this was the headline in the Times Herald. Auto agency burns $500,000 damage. 36 cars at Kwood's destroyed. A spectacular fire Monday night swept through Kwood Auto Company destroying 36 automobiles, other equipment, some of the records, and most of the firm's sales and service building, which covered a half a block in the downtown area. John Kaywood, company president, estimated damage at $500,000. He said the building and contents are total loss and were partially insured. Although 36 cars were lost, Charles Barrett, company secretary, treasurer, and general manager, and several salesmen, who were holding a business meeting in the front part of the building at the time, were able to drive 35 new Buicks and Pontiacs through a wide front door in the showroom to safety. Mr. Barrett and salesman had been discussing sales figures at the meeting and had reported that January was the company's best sales month in its history. The caption on this photograph says this. This photo shows 11 of the 36 cars destroyed when flames swept through the Kaywood Auto Agency, causing damage estimated at $500,000. This was taken from the southwest corner of the building and shows a section of the paint and bum shop where the fire is believed to have started. Here is a similar photograph, one that you can see a little bit clearer. And then in this photo below, it says, Flames leaped 200 feet in the sky as the fire at the Kaywood Auto Agency reached its peak about 10.30 p.m. Monday. Some of the 36 cars lost in the flames were new autos that had already been sold and were being prepared for delivery. Others were customer cars in for servicing. And then it has a couple more photographs on the next page. Caption on this top photograph reads, Charred automobiles are shown in fire wreckage at the Kaywood Auto Company. This photo was taken at 2 a.m. today as fireman shown in background put out the last of the flames. This is the garage section of the south end of the block long auto agency building. And then as we drop down here, it shows uh, one of the automobiles that were still on the hoist and the caption reads, Caught on the grease hoist. This car was one of several destroyed in a fire at the Kaywood Auto Company Monday night. The fire was accompanied by a series of explosions that doomed most of the block long building. Thought it might help you understand better where this fire was uh, if you look at this Sanborn map. You can see uh, Grand River, previously Butler Street, and the auto showroom and the offices were on Grand River. But for the rest of the block behind that was all the repair facilities, the pump shop and the paint shop and so forth. And so this is where the fire actually was. The uh, auto showroom uh, didn't have much damage at all except for perhaps some smoke damage and the same with the offices. You can also see that uh, this block isn't near as long as it is today because there used to be a street about halfway through it, and that was Sarnia Street. So that's where uh, Kaywood's uh, facility ended on Sarnia Street. And in this photograph here, the fellow on your right is actually walking down Sarnia Street, uh, going to Michigan Street. And if you look at the signage up there, it's hard to see, but the signage does say Sarnia Street. But that's long gone now. One of the reasons that we know that the showroom and the offices weren't damaged is because of this ad that was run a couple weeks after the fire. Kaywood's moving back? 
Yes, sir. When we moved out, it was the hottest deal in town. Moving back into our old showroom and general offices. The same convenient location we have been in for 25 years. The service department had temporary quarters down on 4th, uh, 4th and Court Street, uh, the old Riverside building. And the body shop was in the old Foster building on 10th Street. After Grand River, they moved their operation over in the 600 block of Huron Avenue, which is what you see here. Today, it looks like this. The Robich brothers are in there now. And check out that SUV with the double axles. Sometime Google Maps cracked me up. On a side note, did you know that in 1957, Kay would open up a car wash in the next block north? A 700 block, and you can see a photograph of it here. All right, let's get back to this corner uh, where Kay Woods was. And uh, we looked at this in video number 19, and I told you at that time that uh, before Kay Woods, there was a Yoakum automobile there for a while. And I also told you back in the 1800s, there was a livery there, C.F. Smith livery. And at the time, this is all I had on the C.F. Smith livery. But since that time, I've gotten more information and also some photos I'd like to show you. A livery, of course, is someplace that took care of animals, mainly horses. But they also did more. If you look at this card, you can see it says livery and sale stable. So he also sold horses. Then later he expanded into the hack service under the name City Hack Line. They don't use the name hack anymore unless you're hacking a computer. But back then, uh, hacks would be the equivalent today of uh, between a taxi cab and a moving van. Hacks were used by the locals, but they were mainly geared toward tourists. And back at that time period, uh, tourism was a pretty big part of the uh, economy in Port Huron. One of the hacks was a buckboard. This might be used by a single fellow that just got off one of the excursion boats or perhaps a train. And he wanted to go someplace where the streetcars didn't because around Port Huron, uh, the streetcars were a really good way of transportation. So he would rent a buckboard and he would go out to maybe a Volca or someplace where the streetcars didn't run. The second type of hack was the wagon. And in this photograph, uh, you can see one of uh, C.F. Smith's wagons uh, from the livery. And these were used mainly for transporting things, probably mostly by locals, but sometimes by tourists as well. I want to thank Kathleen for posting some of these photos online. Photographs gives a personal meaning to a business. Just looking at a calling card doesn't mean too much, but when you look at the family, a picture of the family, or, or in this case, the men that worked for C.F. Smith, uh, it means a little bit more. You remember it better. His name was Charles Fisher Smith, but he went by C.F. Smith. And here you see a photograph of him with one of the horses from his livery. The third hack was a barouche. In this article from uh, 1873, written by uh, Mr. Smith in the newspaper, it says, I ordered my splendid new barouche the 15th of last April with the intention of putting it on the streets as soon as it arrived. I made the same known through newspapers and by advertisement in the New City Directory. The hack arrived Monday morning, July 21st, and was on the streets the same day for inspection and for trial by those who desired to ascertain its merits. The next day was ready for business and the first party to use it were General Hancock and his friends who pronounced it first class in every respect. My new barouche will always be on hand when ordered with a good team and a careful and sober driver. I publish no regular scale prices but will give reasonable rates to all for the service rendered. Well, if you're like me, you didn't know what a barouche was, but I had to look it up. A barouche is a higher class carriage, usually uh, rented by families that came off perhaps a boat and wanted to go somewhere. And uh, they had uh, two seats uh, facing each other. So usually they could carry four, 
Maybe they squeezed in six, but mostly four people. A barouche is the type of carriage that the royalty in uh, London tootle around town in. So I think Mr. Smith had uh, a right to be proud of uh, that high-class carriage he could rent out. This photograph shows Mr. Smith with one of his horses and his grandson, Stanley Guy Smith, who was a radio announcer with WHLS for many years, as well as a director of the Port Huron Civic Players. So well, that's a little bit of history for you. This is Mr. Smith's home that was on St. Clair Street. I can't show you what it looks like today because that's where the St. Clair Community College complex is. Mr. Smith was quite the entrepreneur. He later went into the uh, cigar and tobacco business. And after that, he went into the street cleaning business, at least uh, in the respect of cleaning the streets with the water, a sprinkling system uh, that he had. And he had a bid on it, as you can see from uh, this advertisement here. And he must have had the low bid most of the time because uh, later on he officially became the city street sprinkler. And this is a type of uh, sprinkling wagon that would clean the streets back then. I don't think they were all the official workers. Looks like they're out for a Sunday ride. This is the Smith family in 1913 gathered together for reunion. And uh, would anyone want to guess uh, where they're located at? Well, look in the background. Yep, that's Kiwaden Amusement Park. They are ready for a great day. All right, let's get back to uh, the corner of Grand River and Michigan Street. And uh, we want to look at the next fire. And we don't have to go very far. We just have to go across the street where the Ice Museum is today. That building that the Ice Museum is in was built because the building prior to that had burned down. Spike Furniture wasn't the only furniture store at this location. In 1918, it was the M.H. Mann Furniture Store. But in December of 1918, R.W. Spike buys Mann Business, a city man to conduct furniture store on Grand River Avenue. And I'll let you read this uh, at your leisure, but uh, I thought this was interesting. He considers Port Huron one of the five live wire cities of Michigan. I don't think I ever heard Port Huron described as a live wire city. But I think at one time it probably was. The building that both Man and Spike uh, Furniture was in is this building here. A three-story building that was eventually destroyed by fire. Here's an early ad for Spike Furniture. Wash day. You can boil and unnecessarily waste your time and fuel and involve danger to person and damage to apparel. Rub wearing away the fabric of your clothes and punishing yourself with the endless round of wash day's backache and toil, dulled spirits. Ring, tugging with might and main over the creaking, back-breaking, hand-power ringer. Or turn on a switch and let Wayne do your washing. This is like no other wash machine I've ever seen before. As we scroll down here, we can see the old-fashioned uh, tubs and ringer. And the wash tub went on the uh, one side, put it through the ringer, and then ringed out clothes goes on the other side. You take that out to the clothesline and hang it up. Boy, we sure got it easy today with those electric and gas dryers. What amazed me about this ad wasn't what was advertised, but the Times Herald made a mistake. Instead of saying R.W. Spike Furniture Company, they said R.W. Spine Furniture Company. And I'm sure they heard about that. In 1965, the Spike family sold it to the Eulogen family. And uh, here you can see actually the uh, owners. Well, the owner is technically Charles uh, Eulogen, but uh, he and his wife, B. Uh, ran the store together. And they were the owners when the store burned down. 
December 5, 1966. This was the front page of the Times Herald. I'll read part of this for you. Fire caused an estimated $500,000 damage Sunday night when flames, sometimes shooting 200 feet into the sky, engulfed three buildings in the heart of the business district in Port Huron. Destroyed in the blaze, which for a while threatened five other downtown stores, were the Spike Furniture Company, the Montgomery Ward's warehouse at the rear of Spike's, now being used as a warehouse for J.B. Sperry Company, and the auto service center of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, which was under construction adjacent to Spike's on the east side of the building. It goes on to say the heat was so intense that all the windows at the rear of Dave's, a three-story brick building, were cracked. Dave's has been in several different locations, but at this time he was uh, at the old Montgomery Ward building on Huron Avenue. You can see a photograph here. The Goodyear store sat right next to the Spike store and uh, just east of it. And this was a, uh, a store under construction. Matter of fact, very close to moving into from their location on Military Street. So that certainly slowed down the grand opening date. I don't really have a good picture of the warehouse that was behind Spikes, but it was used by Sperry's and McCormick Wards, and it was also used by Beard and Campbell when they were located on Huron Avenue, and they also sold uh, farm supplies out there. But in this photograph here, uh, the St. Clair Hotel, this one was on the corner before Spikes. In the background, that big tall building, that was the warehouse, and that's the only picture I've actually seen of it. All right, let's get back to the fire. Uh, some more pictures from the newspaper. And I don't know why, but it seems like all the bad fires are in the wintertime. Maybe because of heating apparatus or oil lamps or something, but a lot of these were in February and in December. And this one, of course, was in December. And the wind gusts were like 25 or 30 miles an hour, so it was very difficult fire to uh, put out and to keep from spreading. Not very often uh, you get this many photographs of a fire in the Times Herald, but uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, this documentation of that fire. And so here's another page of them. And if you're wondering what that photograph is on the right hand side, that's a fire hydrant. And the back pressure of the water is making a spew out of that uh, fire hydrant like a fountain. And they were fighting this weather in 30 degree temperatures. Here's a photograph of the aftermath. These are steel beams from the old warehouse behind Spikes. And here you can see the cleanup crews uh, starting to clean up the rubble on that corner. And that uh, tall wall is about the only thing left of the old warehouse. So what caused this fire? Well, there was a crack in the chimney of Spike Furniture, and not just a little crack. The crack was 18 inches. Shortly after the fire, Spike Furniture posted this in the paper. And basically what it says is that they decided that they would build again at the same location, a brand new store. But in the meantime, they were gonna move uh, their location, a temporary location, and uh, at that time, they didn't know where it would be, but later it would be discovered that it would be at the old Gobel gift stamp store on the 600 block of Huron Avenue. And build a new store they did. And this is the new store that they built. It was a two-story uh, building instead of the old three-story building, but they still had three floors of furniture because they used the uh, basement as well. In 1997, the store was sold once again. The buyers were Daniel and Audrey Dial. And you can see the outside of the store is a little different now than the previous photograph that we looked at. Their business lasted about 10 years to 2007. And then Spike Furniture closed their door for good. In 2008, the Port Huron Ice Museum that was on Yaker Street was running out of room. The caption on this photo says, Old ice wagons and memorabilia sit out of sight Thursday at the Noten Ice Museum in Port Huron Township. 
The items were sitting in the back building because there was not enough room in the museum. In May of 2008, this appeared on the front page of the Times Herald. Museum plans moved downtown. Downtown Port Huron soon could be home to a large gallery space thanks to the Noten Foundation's recent purchase of the former Spike Furniture Building at 317 Grand River Avenue. Officials with the foundation plan to move the Noten Ice Museum from Port Huron Township to the new location and along with it feature Port Huron Museum exhibits. I've never visited the Ice Museum since I moved out of state in the year 2000, I really haven't had many opportunities to get back. But I've made it a point to make sure that on my next trip, I'm going to visit that museum and look at all the amazing exhibits that they have. And also while I'm there, I'll look around that museum and realize what an amazing furniture store that was once here. <music>